welcome back to Not Just Another Jessica. As you can see from my shirt, it's a Disneyland shirt. We're getting ready to go on a trip to Disneyland. Now, going to Disneyland can be very expensive. We've been a number of times with our family of six, and today I have some great tips for you on how to save money during a Disneyland trip. Number one is the cost of tickets. The cost of tickets to Disneyland is often a fixed cost, unless you're maybe in the armed forces and can get a discount on base, or you work for a big company where they bulk buy the tickets and you can buy them from them at a discounted rate. Now, if you're not one of those people, you probably do have to pay the full price for a Disneyland ticket. However, there are things you can do to mitigate the other expenses when you're there, the ones that you can control. The number one thing we look for when we go to Disneyland is to go during a slow time. Now, during a slow time, the flights and rooms should be less expensive and easier to get. And then when you get into the park, you will have a chance to do more of the rides and experiences. And that just makes you feel like you're getting more for your money. If you're there during peak time and it is so crowded that you cannot get onto anything and your kids are crying in line, it is not going to feel like the happiest place on earth. So find that slow time and take vacation then. So the way you can do that is by going online and there's park attendance trackers. And generally you can look at the year before or predictions for the year you're going and pick a time where it won't be crowded. So you can get the most for your money while you're in the park. Now, another thing that you can do is buy your tickets or gift cards to get your tickets at a store where you generally do your grocery shopping. So near our house, there's a Kroger store and they sell three day park hoppers and they also sell Disneyland gift cards. And if you preload to your phone app to get double points on gift cards or quadruple points, you'll get fuel points and then also points towards your cash back at the store. And while you'll still be spending the same amount on the tickets, you will at least get some fringe benefits from the purchases of the tickets when you get home from the trip. The third thing we do to save money while at Disneyland is to pick a hotel that has a complimentary breakfast and either a dinner or a happy hour. So with our family of six, if we were spending even between 20 and $40 at a restaurant to purchase breakfast, that's the rough estimate of that would be 30. And for six days of a trip, that's $180 on breakfast alone. And then if we were to go out to dinner, even at a cheap restaurant, sharing dishes between different people, it would be generally at least $35. And for six days there, that's $210. So that adds up to $390 saved by staying somewhere where we can have breakfast and either dinner or an evening snack at the hotel. I also checked before we booked our hotel and looked for one that had a microwave, a refrigerator, and a coffee maker in the room because we can use those to make our own food for small snacks and that saves a lot of time and money. Number four that I do to save money for a trip is I pre-purchase our Disney shirts or souvenirs or anything themed that we're gonna do for the kids. For example, I looked all year at Disney shirts when I was online doing my other shopping and I found the kids Disneyland shirts for between three and eight dollars a piece, which is a much lower price than if I were buying them in the park. So when I saw them, if they were a good price and something that I thought they would like, I just bought them and set them aside so that they would have them for the trip and they would be excited about it and it would feel special, but it wouldn't be very expensive. Another thing that you can do is to buy your food before you go into the park. So we're gonna fly in from our Pacific Northwest home into Orange County and after we land at the airport we are going to drive straight to the Aldi. We don't even have Aldi's in Washington so I find this to be exciting but the nice thing with Aldi is the groceries are cheaper there than what I would spend on groceries at home. So I go and I buy simple foods that can be made into sandwiches or granola bars and snacks and those sort of things to bring into the park. My kids are so excited to be in the park that they often don't want to sit still for a meal and they're happy to grab a quick snack and get back to the rides and attractions. Having the food with you can save you so much money. A drink can be $4 in the park, a snack can be between 5 and 10, and with six people that really adds up. 
One of the reasons we try to save money on our trips to Disney is so that we can do them more often. And we're really transparent with that with our kids. We explain, hey, if we save money here this year, we're happy to come back next year. However, if these trips are so price prohibitive, you might only go once or twice. And the kids are pretty happy to trade off a Mickey Mouse shaped pretzel for getting to come again the next year. Um, before you leave for your trip, Think about your time at the airport. Your time at the airport can be very expensive, especially with kids being antsy or excited to travel. It can be tempting to just buy them food and drink there, but that gets really expensive and it can also be really unhealthy. So what we tend to do is when we pack our stuff for going on the plane, we pack some of their favorite snacks into the backpacks that they carry for themselves. So they have them with them at their seat. We also bring an empty water bottle. Now it's really important that it's empty because you can't bring liquids through the airport. So if you have an empty water bottle, you can go into the food court at your airport and fill it with ice water so you have nice fresh water to drink while on the plane and you didn't have to spend any money on it or generate any single use plastic waste. And that's something we try to avoid also. Make sure to pack a backpack or soft-sided cooler in your luggage. This can be used for bringing your snacks and drinks with you on the plane, or if you don't need it for that time, just bring it with you in your checked or onboard luggage. And when you get to the park, you can use it to carry all the important things. Another thing I forgot to mention is that when we're at Aldi, we also pick up sunscreen and band-aids or anything that we might need for in the park, because we don't wanna have to try to carry a big bottle of sunscreen on the airplane, since we do tend to carry on our luggage and that is not allowed. But Aldi is very affordable for all these things. So we pick up that stuff there and have it ready to go into the park with us. Another thing that's not necessarily a money saver, but I feel like it helps you to get your money's worth is if you're going to Disneyland during the rainy season, bring some cheap thin ponchos in your backpack with you. That way, if it starts to rain, you can just throw them on and continue enjoying the park. It's also a great time to enjoy the park because often when it rains, so many people leave the park that you can get on your favorite rides that usually have a longer wait time in a much quicker rate and go on a lot of them in one day. So those are my tips for doing Disneyland on a budget. These are the things we do before we get there so that we can make sure that when we get there, we can enjoy ourselves and relax and have a great time and not be worried about money or spending and truly have a wonderful day and make memories with our kids. Do you have any tips for traveling to Disneyland? Is there something that you do that you feel helps your family save money or have a more relaxed and enjoyable trip? I'm gonna be talking to you later about things that I do on an airplane to keep my kids occupied. We've been flying on airplanes with little kids now for 13 years, and we've done a few things that have made it easier along the way. I hope you have a great day. Bye.